Hello, my name is um, Kunho Peter, ba Peter Park. I go. I usually go by Peter, um, <coughs> but I, I was born in in the States. I, well, I was great. I grew up in in Korea, so I have a Korean name, and Peter is my English name, Catholic name, but that doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> Um, <coughs> and as Nava introduced me, I'm a woodworker. I work with wood a lot. Um, and I was asked to do a talk uh, on the couple of select collections uh, in the museum. <coughs> and as I was scoping through, I was thinking about what what can I talk about uh, an object and I started thinking about this place it's called Center for Art in Wood so it's got to be something about wood so I started thinking what is was it what is it um, distinguishable what is it distinctive uh, to me uh, when I see a, a wooden object and um, and it, it was always when well wood I I see wood as uh, very similar to um, human flesh, and the reason because reason is that I see wood as a a live like a, a material that it was once a living organism. Um, and you know when you think of think in that aspect, it's like, oh, we're we're it's been you know it it once lived, but we cut it up and then we diced it up, and it's like, kind of, you know, cruel. But you know once once you pass that that, you know, um, train of uh, trail of thoughts, then you kind of start looking at, well, you know, you you, it's it the tree is eventually going to be dead, and then you're you you're reclaiming that material and then making it into another um, form giving it a, a purpose so I always sort of uh, especially when I, when I'm looking at a wooden object I um, consider it as um, like a living thing you know um, you know like in like in Beauty and the Beast when uh, in the Dis Disney movie Beauty and the Beast there's like a um, <coughs> you know clock, talking clock, or a talking candle, candle holders, um, that sort of thing. So um, here's my notes in case I ramble. Um, and so that's sort of how I see see object, and especially a wooden object, I. I can't not kind of ignore the f the the fact of the um, the quality of the material. So I kept seeing it as like a uh, as a living thing. Like I, I teach a, a woodworking class in in U Arts, and and recently one of my students were and we we are we were doing a project uh, a chip carving project, and they were working on their frames. Everybody's working on their frame, and and I was prepping um, the class, and then one of the students were uh, referring one of the tools or frames as her or him. Like he was asking, I can't remember what was the question, but he he was referring the frame as him, and and then who I said who, and then he oh I mean this chisel or. I mean this frame, and and he was, oh oh, I I missed, and then he was ah oh, you know it's just me I I um, you know I consider like objects I I have emotion towards objects it's stupid, and then I thought about that and it's not it's not stupid it's actually for for people like us who work with. Mid, like very material based work and very functional object based workers we re it, that's all we do 
I mean, I know, I know um, some, some people have very, you know, clear um, di sort of different perspective on that, but at least I really have a deep emotion towards objects. So, so you know, it, that's sort of the, that was sort of the base I of the idea when I was peeking, picking these objects, especially the, the ones on, on, on here, and actually this one, if you don't mind me moving around, um, I sort of pick the objects into uh, the categories of, oh, I'll just put it here. Um, and then these guys have a different kind of topic, but first, uh, so here, and you know, I maybe less than a half of these collections, I, I might know them as a, you know, but more than a half of them, I couldn't really um, recall the name, so I looked it up. Um, this is Graham Brittle's piece. Uh, this is Robert, Robert Trout piece. He does a lot of, um, well, th and this one's Michael Broly. He, he actually does a lot of, his main, main work is it doesn't really look like this um it's kind of an off uh like a b-side piece which i love uh this one um graham P priddle he does a lot of a lot of um sort of veiny piece like that but usually it's more um it's not creature like it's more sort of uh, pattern base work so I thought it was really interesting at uh, same as Robert Trout's piece and John John Jordan too too these are very technique based artists uh, it's usually it's a common thing among turners and they are um, heavy into patterns mathematical patterns geometry uh, but geometry comes from nature, so it's not, you can't really say that ge uh, geometry is not organic, because organic shapes comes from nature. Uh, so there's a sort of a, um, um, you know, yeah. Um, but these are the pieces that I thought it was sort of non-Turner's Turner's piece like, and they were very creature-like. Uh, they had characters. They they look like they're alive. They they it feels like they're gonna start talking to me. Um, and those are the type of objects that I love and 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 I look for. And then I when I make objects, that's the type of things that I constantly think about. Um, and. Um, this one, it's not really, I'm not sure what's the function of it, but I really appreciate it when a functional object has those aspects because it's not, not really easy to match those two things together. Function is something, it's very strict I, in order for, for a ob functional object to serve the purpose well but uh, you eventually go towards a very specific form like square uh, or rectangular like i i'm reorganizing my house right now uh, i i recently got married so that's what the type of sort of thing that you do when you get married uh, and then in my house when i think about like well-functioning furniture I'm like very strict. I, th these guys, I, I have these bookcases, and these guys do the job. They're they're nice and sturdy, um, and they're they're yes mans. They they do what I told them to do. They hold objects. They they work with other other pieces. Um, but 
and that's the sort of sort of thing that I have to fight against when I am designing something um, something artistic but yet functional uh, because that function aspect constantly fight against that that um, that sort of romanticness of of the of the craft or the making and I think this one I, I believe this is a, a vessel that is combined with a a, um, a sculpted top this is a an also a vessel uh, that has a very sort of a, uh, volumetric very um, anatomic in, in, in other way but they're, they're still a, a functional object. This one, uh, I thought, <coughs> you know, the form in, in general is just a very oval sort of vessel with the top, but the outer texture kind of feels like, like a furry animal. Um, and I, th I thought that was very lifelike. Um, so, those were the things that I was looking in to through these objects and um, and those are the kind of things that I try to try to put into my work when I'm making my my own work so when when I, I chose these two pieces uh, related to more of the technical uh, part of my work and you know when you think of woodworking you always think about uh, the work itself as like a subtractive process um, and especially carving you you think of carving you think of you know a lumberjack with a with a chainsaw and an axe with a, a big log on the side and then just like shaving down you know a bear or or you know um, and that's one one way of carving uh, out of wood. But I love um, working with wood like clay. I like um, I like to build the form up, and I like to smooth smooth it down. Um, so, and when I do, I there's a lot of lot of measuring, a lot of guessing. But it's not it's not a and I use use you know uh, math sometimes I use geometry sometimes I use you know simple calculation just to figure out the 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 angles and stuff but it's not numeric mathematic it's not quantified mathematic it's more very intuitive mathematic I it's it there's a difference between um, finding uh, a num numeric pattern and applying it to an object it, instead of that you come you have a, a shape that you want and then you f you figuring out the the numbers um, the the form f comes first on on the latter part the numbers come f first on the the first method and I always kind of work on the second method so I mean in, in that aspect this is very um, very you know geomet the geometry is correct very sym symmetrical very perfectly circular but the way it it established uh, it the way it build up the structure um, is not from a a whole log it didn't it, it didn't start it from a, a this size log it started from a, a, a many little piece of wood that it's put together in a in a segmented way uh, and then it it smoothed down to its shape and that's how I build up my when I'm making my work that's how I kind of build up structure uh, it's just in my case it's usually not this symmetrical or circular it's more organic shape like that so 
when I'm working on my work, usually how it goes is I come up with the shape like this first, and then I try to figure out a way to make that in this, in this manner. So those are, that's why I chose these objects to talk about. Was that 30 minutes? I'm five minutes shy. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions? Yep. Uh, how do you seal, you mentioned, so how do you seal the multiple pieces of wood for like So, mm -hmm. so wha what do you mean seal? Um, if they're like separate blocks put together, uh -huh. how, do you, how do you join them? How do you, uh, how do you connect them? Yeah. Um, so, that's a great question because it's, it's a technical issue. Uh, usually, um, if, you, if this, is, this was not a continuous form, um, and if this wasn't there on the bottom that holds these, these pieces, usually if you connect wood like this dor uh, direction, which is grain direction running this way, and these are basically end grain to end grain connection. It's very weak. So if there are no um, additional support, then you would have a floating tenon in between. Are you familiar with the term tenon? I think I can it's basically a, a piece of wood that, that uh, runs between that seam. So it holds this much material and that much ma material to compensate that, that disconnection of the grain. But if you have a connection something like this, which is really cool, which is there's all these end grain to end grain connections, but on the top there's this continuous uh, piece of wood that is holding all these end, uh, disconnected seam line together. This way, you don't need any, any additional spline or tenon in between end grain to end grain connection. So in this way, you can actually build up without any elaborate, um, you know, supportive pieces in between. And that's kind of the key part that I utilize in order to kind of build up uh, structure. So there's a lot of um, offsetting seam lines, um, and 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 they look, you know, offset, but it's very intentional because in order to hold the structure, it needs to be offset. Any other question? Uh-huh. Even decorativeness in the actual work, mm -hmm. um, where contrasting words are used and posed against each other to form patterns mm -hmm. um, or detail. And but in your work, mm -hmm. you do everything you can to obfuscate or cover up the fact that it's segments of work and that it's added. That is true and not true at the same time. I used to. I used to. So I my my goal to achieve form was used to be creating a, uh, a one continuous fluid form and I this having the seam line like being able to not have to hunt down big lumbers in order to create big wooden pieces um, having these those seam line on a curvilinear surface was a compromise for me and you know I was okay for a while and so I actually start, tried to match the grain direction I tried to hide the seam line as much as possible before but then there were some instances that I just couldn't couldn't you know I didn't have a choice so I had to mix up different batches uh, to you know do it on the fly 
to kind of hit the deadline and and then I saw the end result and it was much more interesting and I actually liked the this this alignment of the the grain um, some and usually I I try to stick to one type of wood species later on I tried different different species from different batches and what I really like actually these days I try it like diff like ash like a very bright tone wood and a and walnut which is usually what what happens to accentuate or create contrast but I what I like to do these days is I try to pick um, wood from different from the same board but I mix match from different areas so and wood as a lumber it's natural material so it, it's not an even perfectly even tone even if it's from the same board and if you mix, mix those um, places or pieces from different areas you get different shades but it's really subtle so you get you get a sort of a, a similar tone in general but then once you look in closely there's very subtle difference like 50 shades of gray sort type of uh, thing and that's really um, interesting to me so that was sort of a transition through through my work for for the last couple of years I think did that answer your question <laughs> any other question all right well was that good? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>